Hi everyone. So today we are going to discuss about the let me go to here optimization. Yeah. So today we are going to discuss about that how to create a new transaction source in accounts receivable is an application. Okay. First, we'll try to understand what it is and uh, what is the functionality name and uh, how does works in the application, so on. So when you try to create or implement new transaction source for any client, so these are the things we need to keep in mind. Transaction source setup plays a key role in determining the behavior of the transaction forms as well as on how auto invest validates the data to be imported. Ideally, when you import your transactions from the third party legacy system, this will be this will play a very key role on that. Okay. When you create a transaction and associate it to a transaction source, several attributes of the source are defaulted into transactions. The following functionality is controlling by your transaction set, source setup. So that is what it is. It is going to work. I do this is the one uh, where you can create a transaction source. So setups, go to offerings as the financials, functional areas building, task name is manage transaction source. Okay, let's get into application, how to create or how to like, you know, uh, set up, configure the new transaction source. So already I'm there in the user instance. Let me go back here and come back in the navigation point of view. Yeah. Select as functional areas of financials and uh, here you can choose customer billing. In the customer billing, yeah, here you can see the customer billing. Under the customer billing, you can see manage transaction source. Just uh, click on that. This is the page where you can go and create new transaction source and as well as if you want to check the existed things which was created in the previously that also you can see from here itself only by providing the information you know, click on search tab to see the all the uh, transaction source which was created in the previously okay so in our demo session we will try to like demonstrate how to create a new transaction source and what are the types we have how it is going to work in the application these things we will discuss right now so when you click on play symbol, it will give us to enter the data, create transaction source. Under that, you can see there are a couple of uh, categories are there where you can say general information and uh, source defaults. Under the general information, we can see transaction source set and a legal entity, name, description, type, and uh, active from date and to date. So what are those fields are telling about us? Transaction source set is uh, referring, it is referring to the RDS, nothing but as a reference data set ID. So it means that which data reference set I need to use for this particular new transaction source creation. And legal entity, if you want to restrict this particular transaction source to any specific legal entity, then you can choose that particular legal entity name here. <laughs> It's not a default, it's, a, it's not a, like a mandatory field, it's an optional field. But since as for the business requirement, if they want us to create this source is for a specific legal entity to restrict it, to restrict as like, you know, where they need to track some kind of transactions, then they can use for this one. This is quite common as name, we can provide the transaction in the description, and the types. The types will uh, go play a major role for creating the transaction source. We have ideally two types. One is manual and the second is imported. These two are there. Now, if you look at when I select as a manual transaction sources type is manual, I can see this many fields only, right? If I go and choose imported. So you yeah, actually you can see there are a lot of, not many other setups or functionalities came in the picture, right? So now what we can see, first we'll go by manual source creation and we'll see that. Okay, and select as a custom, we'll see like which is available transaction source. Yeah, this is the one, right? Common, this one is, you'll see. 
you can choose as a US one we set and legal entity i don't want to keep any specific legal entity for this one and here you can say as uh, test underscore is um, score tc set uh, tc ts in the financial source so keep it as manual the active if you like if you're not enable the checkboxes in the active then this source will not work for us and date is student test you mentioned that as 25th january and uh, source defaults so the name itself only says that line of source defaults which are the things we can populate automatically by using this transaction source automatic transaction numbering yes if you want to enable this one says that like can provide the what is the last transaction number let's say example 2024 if i give this number when i go and create any transactions in the application the system will automatically generate the next number 2025 as my transaction number automatically that, that's how this will works if we disable this one you can see that this area is grayed out we can't enter anything at all because you are not using automatic transaction numbering so it means that like you know the business users can enter them manually uh, which are the transaction number they want to generate it so that's how it is so always you can keep it as a transaction uh, number is automatic just a client right so we just enable it and give is there 2024 okay and this is how it is works and uh, reset handling for periods so ideally we can have two options here on account and reset if you want to keep like you know the reset handling for periods in the which way you want to handle it either on account or refund ideally you can keep it as a on account only so you can keep it as on account and the copy document number transactions. This is something like you know, where you can use the style or, or copy doc, or document number transaction number as well as. Ideally, we know we never support like you know, recommend this feature. And uh, allow duplicate transaction number. When you enable disable this one, this will get added, automatically enable it because now we are using as a automatic right so that it won't be allow us to create duplicate things. Here. If you want to, the, if the business wants to create duplicate numbers while importing the transactions or manually also, you can enable this one by selecting, by disabling this one, you can choose this one. And copy transaction information flexible credit number. Yeah, this, if you want, you can use these things, else it's not required at all, this thing. Control transaction completion also, right? And this is something like a reference field default values. Which one you want to defaulted here whether you, you can have this meetings right interface header attributes one fifteen we have you can choose any of the one here if you want to and this is something standard transaction type so if you select any other transaction type here this will populate automatically when you create a invoice that's how it is works and similarly for the transaction source as well okay so these many things we can see now the credit uh, create transaction source as a manual type. If you go and use as save and save it, and you can choose imported. So how it works for imported? So import in the sense like you know this transaction source can be used for third party applications when we are going to importing, right? So that's where you can use it. So this will tell us our DMS option invalid line if the if any of the transaction lines are invalid then the system will ask us to whether we can create invoice or not so in this case we can choose that option create invoice or reject invoice so in this case like any we can choose as a reject invoice because i do not want to take a raise if the transaction lines are invalid right so that we can keep it as a reject invoice and similarly, accounting date in a closed period. When you import invoices or when you create invoices, in the closed period of the accounting period, then system will throw an error says that like we cannot able to create invoice due to the credit card closed. You can choose it out. If you keep it as adjust, then the automatically system will try to create an invoice on that accounting date. Okay. And the grouping is something like in which you can keep it as a default one. How it is the the invoice is going to be grouping from the lines and allows sales credits 
And this will not many information we have here, sales credit and customers account, accounting and uh, miscellaneous. So what these things are saying about it? Here. So you can see by default, the system got enabled sales as a number and the sales status type is value. So when you look at the right, when you look at your transactions, uh, you can see this one salesperson number. So it will represent about the number. ID. If you keep it as ID, then you need to call the ID numbers for salespersons. And similarly here, sales credit type, the values. Always you can choose what the type says in values only. Should not use anywhere or a ID. And similarly, customer, bill to customer, we need to provide a value, right? And you, uh, it means that it will allow us to enter the values instead of ID. Similarly, ship to customer and share under sold to customer. And here you can see build to address and similarly same as it is. The payment method also you can choose as a value zone for all of them. Okay. Here you can see accounting. Account invoice rules as a value. Accounting flexibilities are segments, which is our chart of account segment values, payment terms. So similar like this for all of them. So this is how we can create a new transaction source in the accounts receivable application by selecting type is imported or manual. If you if you keep it as a manual, then we can see in the list of values while we when you create the transaction. If you keep it as imported, this particular transaction source will not appear in the list of values while we're creating the transactions in the application. So that's how it works. Okay. So save and save and close. As a best practice always, we need to cross check that like either our works what has been defined or configured either done for correctly or not yes now you can see this is available right now so this is how we can create a new transaction source in the fusion application by using this page okay. thanks for watching my video please do subscribe and share it like it and like you know the upcoming videos i'll make for another plan uh, another the functionality which is there in the Accounts visible in Madrid. Thank you. Thanks once again.